Okay, so I'm going to stop there with uh, chapter 22, and we're going to move on. Let's kind of just let's just take a look at what we've seen so far over the past chapter. We have Ampere's law, which relates this curly pattern of magnetic field to current enclosed by a circular loop. Okay, we also have had Gauss's law, which relates the pattern of electric field over an area, or the electric flux of a closed surface, to the charge enclosed. We've had the magnetic version of Gauss's law, which relates B dot N hat DA, the magnetic flux over a closed surface. To, well, since there aren't any magnetic monopoles, then we said the net magnetic flux over a closed surface should be zero. And so we have three relationships here, two of which have to do with area. One has to do with um, a path integral over a, over a length. And uh, the area ones have electric and magnetic fields, and this one just has magnetic fields. So by symmetry, we might think that there's got to be a relationship of E dot DL over a closed path, a closed loop. And in fact, we've seen that before, right? We talked about, about this a little bit last time. If you're doing the path integral of the electric field, you are finding what? Potential difference, right? And if you, we said that if you take the round trip potential difference over a closed loop, you should get what? You should get zero. Well, this is true for cases where the electric field is created by static charges. Okay. Now, you might say, well, what else is there? What else can create electric fields? Well, we're actually going to see today that there is another way to generate an electric field, or, or another way you can put it is a different type of electric field that's not associated with charges, but actually associated with changes in magnetic fields. And that re relationship is going to be called Faraday's law, but I just want to introduce this here with a little demo. Uh, here, this is a coil of wire. Okay, It's just copper wire round ar wound around uh, 3,400 times. And I'm going to plug this copper wire into a galvanometer. Now, a galvanometer is just basically a voltmeter, or you can use it. You can use it as a voltmeter or an ammeter. It's just going to detect if there is a current running through the uh, the coil. And right now, it's reading zero. Okay, meaning there's no current. Uh, if it current flows in one direction, the needle will deflect one way. If it flows the other direction, the needle will deflect the other. Okay, so it's just measuring a current through here. And let me project this on the screen here. See if we can all see this. Rearrange this here. So we've got our galvanometer hooked up to the coil. And it's not hooked up to any power supply, so obviously there's no, no current running through. All right, so I have a, um, a bar magnet. Okay, so north pole here, south pole here. And the bar magnet, of course, creates a dipole pattern of magnetic field. So I'm going to bring the bar magnet near this coil. What just happened? So I'm, let me move this out of the way for a second. All I'm doing is moving a bar magnet near this coil. And then I'll just sit it here. And it looks like when if it's just sitting here, nothing's happening. I move it away, at least for some time. What happened to the coil?
there was a current. Okay, if we believe the, what the galvanometer is telling us, there must be must be a current in here, right? The needle is deflecting, measuring a slight current throughout these 3,400 turns of copper wire. Now, there's something interesting going on here. We have a magnetic field, right? And a magnetic field is being produced everywhere in space, including at the location of the coil. So here's the, this is the North Pole. This is the North Pole. So I bring the North Pole nearby, and it's making a magnetic field here pointing in that direction, right? If I bring the North Pole closer, what happens to the magnetic field at the observation location of the coil? It gets bigger, okay? If I bring it away, what happens to the magnetic field? It's smaller, okay? So the magnitude is changing, right? If I just keep it here, there's a magnetic field here, but it's not changing. So apparently, this current has something to do with a changing magnetic field. And if I flip the direction, if I move the North Pole closer, you can see the, the needle deflect in one direction, and it deflects in the other when I move it farther away. And then if I change the direction of the field by make, moving the South Pole cl uh, uh, closer, you see the deflection is exactly the opposite. So here's moving the North Pole closer, North Pole farther away, South Pole closer, South Pole farther away. So there's something here having to do with the a changing magnetic field. And it's producing a current, and if there's a current in the, in the wire, meaning the charges are moving in the wire, what do we have to have in the wire? Moving electrons, which are driven by what? But a potential difference, okay, not a magnetic field, because a magnetic field can't cause a charge to accelerate, can cause it to change direction, right? A magnetic, if, if a magnetic field, let's look at that. Bring the lights up here. A magnetic field we know on a single moving charge, uh, if you have a magnetic field, say, pointing in uh, this direction, Well, if the charges aren't moving to begin with, we have a velocity, say, equal to zero. So let's say we're looking at the initial state here. The magnetic force is QV cross B, right? And so if there is no velocity, then there's not going to be a magnetic force. So we can't actually get a magnetic field to, to cause the charges to move. So instead, we need what? An electric field, right? Someone said a potential difference, but, uh, but behind a potential difference, we have an electric field. Because electric forces can drive charges. Elect this is electric forces are Q times E. And so as long as you have an electric field, you can get the force to accelerate the charge in that direction or in the opposite direction if we're talking about negative charges. So somehow there is an electric field associated with a magnetic field that's changing. And you might say, well, it doesn't have anything to do with, we've seen motional EMF, right? So maybe somehow this is a motional EMF effect because the bar magnet is actually moving. Well, there's another way we can create magnetic fields, which is we can have another coil, right? If I run a current through this coil, I can make a magnetic field. So here's a coil connected to a, high, uh, a power supply. Well, it's actually not that high voltage. I think it's only 20 volts, but it's pretty high current. Um, right now it's turned off. So I'm going to bring this second coil near this first one. Now, if I run a conventional current through here, and I'm not sure what the direction is. I think the conventional current the way it's hooked up would run that way. Uh, this also is going to create a magnetic field, right? So if, con if the conventional current is running that way, it should make a magnetic field pointing in that direction uh, at this observation location, the observation location of the original coil. Well, right now the power is turned off, so there's no magnetic field, but I'm going to cause that to change by switching the power on. If I do that, what happened? Try it again. So here I'm turning it off and it deflects a little bit. Turn it 
on. Maybe you need to kill the lights. Well, I think you can see the needle. Let me move it down a little bit. Is that better? Do that, and the needle deflected for just a fraction of a second. Well, consider, okay, so we said that it was associated with a changing magnetic field. So what's happening when I throw the switch? Okay, we're generating magnetic field into this coil, right? The, it takes some, there's some initial transient. Right now, the magnetic field is what? If I have the power turned off, the magnetic field is zero. I turn the power on, and the magnetic field goes from zero to something, okay? During that brief transient period, and that transient's kind of s slowed down when I turn it off, but when I turn it on, it's pretty quick transient. During that brief transient period, the magnetic field created by this, this coil, the, the one on, the, le on uh, the left side, well, my left, your right. The magnetic field on, the, on the, your right suddenly goes from zero to something, right? And so there is a changing magnetic field here for that brief amount of time, okay? So again, something having to do with a change in the magnetic field and is creating, or so, uh, maybe creating is not the right word, but it's associated with an electric field, okay? And this electric field has, well, let's think about pattern here. Now we have it hooked up to a galvanometer in order to actually see a current, but essentially what we have, if we were just looking at one turn, is a loop of wire. Okay, so here's, here's a metal wire. And during this brief time, in both of these cases, either with a bar magnet or with the power supply, during this brief time, there was a changing magnetic field. We saw a conventional current. Now, let's say conventional current is going that way around the loop. So we said that there's got to be an electric field to drive that conventional current. How does the electric field point? What's the pattern? It's got to be pointing in a circle, right? And we said that the electric field has got a point in, in relation to the conventional current, electric, points, electric field is pointing how? Same direction, same direction. So there's got to be an electric field in this metal wire that is in this sort of curly pattern. In fact, the book calls it a curly electric field. To distinguish it from the electric field we, fields we've been dealing with before, the previous cases we've been looking at electric fields that have been created by charges. Electric fields created by charges can't have this pattern because the round trip potential difference we said has got to be equal to zero. But in this case, if we choose a path integral going around this circular path, we're going to get a non-zero E dot DL, right? Because every single piece of that path, that E dot DL part, uh, dot product is going to give us some, some non-zero contribution or some positive contribution if we're going in the uh, counterclockwise direction, just like we did with uh, Ampere's law. So it turns out this isn't equal to zero anymore. And sometimes this is called labeled ENC, meaning it's a non-Coulomb. electric field. Okay. So it's different. This is a different thing. We've, we've not encountered this thing, this phenomenon before. It's an electric field not created by charges but associated with a changing magnetic field. And in fact, the way, let me just sort of give you the equation and we'll eventually pick it apart. It's associated with a change, in fact, a time derivative. And it turns out, to make things work right, it's got to be a negative sign here. But it's a negative time derivative 
of a magnetic flux through the area bound by this loop. So a magnetic flux, remember, is B dot N hat DA. Okay? So this thing is called Faraday's law. 